Hello everyone, Simon here. We're playing the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. I uh, I have not played any of the Sherlock Holmes games before, so it's going to be a blind playthrough of a series. I don't think it matters if we start from the middle of the series. I think all the games are fairly standalone. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an, an adventure game, I believe. A crime-solving adventure game. I mean, Sherlock Holmes is supposed to be like a, a genius, right? But we are playing as Sherlock Holmes. And I'm not sure if I'm the kind of genius that Sherlock Holmes is, so it was, it's going to be interesting. So either the puzzles are going to be impossible to solve, or they're going to make the puzzles kind of kind of easy to solve, and therefore it won't really be like Sherlock Holmes. But it's going to be a bit weird either way. Anyway, let's just go with a new game and see how we uh, we deal with this. As I said, it's a blind playthrough, so. We might get stuck sometimes, and it is a, like a puzzle, a puzzle adventure game. So there might be a bit of uh, getting stuck. Who knows? I've seen the the beginning just to test the frame rates. It's kind of weird, actually, like this. Kids going up to an attic. The attic is giant, by the way. I don't think most attics are this big. I might be wrong, but this is like a massive attic. I was under the impression that attics are usually smaller than this. But maybe the kids are small, and it's actually... I don't know. What's this? So one of the girls is probably caught yeah. a deadly disease by cutting her finger on weird objects. La, la, la. I uh, I don't really like children. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate them, but I don't really like them. <laughs> is that weird? Should I not say that? Anyway. Look, the stupid kid's gonna break the toy. Look at them. Look, 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 what is this? What is this? This is the problem with children. They break Ooh. stuff. Yeah, you broke it. What are you doing? Like, what are you? What are you kids even doing? Do you know how much this stuff costs? Oh look, it's a book. Congratulations, you found a book. Maybe it's a book about pirates with a treasure map. Or maybe it's a diary about kinky sex, I don't know. Why are you no, reading it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I wish that I had seen through all your lies. Oh, start from the beginning, not the middle. Yeah, I do and know how so to. so I decided to pick up my pen to relate the most disturbing episode of my life thus far. It all began early one morning in 1898, when Sherlock Holmes invited me to accompany him on a visit to the Marquis of Conningham. Yes, look at his face. Did the graphic settings change? Watson, my dear fellow, we can now go and inform the Marquis that we have found the Samoan necklace, and very much faster than Inspector Baines, too, which pleases me. Have you really solved the theft, Holmes? And so quickly? I have indeed, Watson. And believe me, it was completely unnecessary to spread out all over London, as our friend Baines thought was best. He likes to boast that his methods are equal to mine, but once again the outcome has contradicted him. After all these years of accompanying you upon your investigations, I thought that by now I should be reasonably capable of following your train of thought. But in this particular case, I must admit that I don't understand anything at all. Because you're stupid. Ah, you see, but you do not observe, Watson. There lies the difference. It is a matter of course. Yeah, Watson. A matter of course? In the middle of the night, when everyone is fast asleep, the service bell within that room rings out and alerts the servants. They dress quickly and come running. But the door is locked and there is a strong smell of burning from within. A few seconds later, the master of the house himself, the robbed Marchioness's husband, the Marquis of Conningham, arrives and unlocks the door using the sole key. 
A fire has started inside the room, but they have managed to arrive in time to put it out. It is at that moment that the Marquis realizes that the famous Samoan necklace, which had been safe within its glass cabinet only a few hours earlier, has now disappeared. In order to explain, let us confirm my theory before the arrival of Inspector Baines. Ah, the frame rate is not as good as I'd had it before. Does it matter? It, I don't know. It's 20 frames a second right now. So let me guess. So there's only one key to this room. The Marcus has it. So I'm guessing the Marcus stole, quote unquote, stole his own necklace to claim insurance. <laughs> See if I'm correct or not. So uh, I am Sherlock Holmes. I can move Sherlock Holmes. This is me. Look at my face. Look how serious my face is. Can I not? Look how serious my face is. Yes. I'm a serious man. That is Watson. He's got a nice moustache. Man, this is so... The movement is really awkward. Like, he turns and then he moves. I hope it's not going to be an action game because it's going to be really awkward. Okay, let's jog around. There's a screen here. Can I, like, get changed behind the screen? Also, paintings on the wall. Oh, that's not bad. What's going on there? Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. The mouse is kind of slow, but maybe that would discourage me from swinging the camera around too much. There's a thing on the ground. There's a candle on the ground there. The game is telling me to look at the broken showcase. So there's a tutorial thing going on, which I'm completely ignoring right now. To look at the piano and the light streaming in the window. That's pretty good, right? Look at this fancy house. Alright, let's go look at the uh, what the game wants us to look at. This thing. This window was cut with a diamond. A clean, discreet piece of work. This is where the necklace was. See how tiny the hole is, and not one fingerprint upon the window. So, they're wearing a glove. You always interact with the mouse. After a clue is examined, the icon will turn green. Please move Sherlock Holmes near the left window. You should see two clue icons simultaneously. Okay, well, let's wander around, walk over here. Two clue icons. Enter examination mode with multi-zone. Press mouse. You can switch cursor between items using uh, buttons. Validate cancel. So I can okay, choose like that. This is kind of awkward, but okay. So we can look down here. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. Right. A mark undoubtedly made by a diamond. Someone tried to cut the glass, but he was interrupted. Therefore, the thief tried to escape through the window, but he was interrupted. No, because you can't escape through a hole this small. Like, if you open a hole like this, you can't really escape through it. So, maybe there was a, an accomplice that they meant to pass the necklace out. Because like, you can't escape through here because it's not big enough. Right. Alright, go to the chimney. Hand. Hand. Magnifying glass. We just... Alright, we're just gonna steal someone's magnifying glass. Awesome. You can open your inventory by pressing the right mouse button. While playing, you can always activate any of your items from your inventory by rolling out the central wheel of your mouse. Alright, well this is my magnifying glass. Also, inventory. Oh hey, matches and knife! Let's go stab things! Matches, pocket knife, magnifying glass. That's my bag. I've got a man bag. Uh, conversation log. Diary. And uh, this menu is not available. And... Okay, never mind. Near the piano, some music scores are on the floor. You can activate an item by selected it, selecting it in your inventory. Or directly in the game by scrolling the central wheel of the mouse. Alright. So this... Changes the camera, interestingly enough. Wow! You can- there's like... Interesting. So there's like first person view, third person view. And then like uh... This is- this is interesting. You can just... 
walk around like this. Oh, you can do like adventure game mode. Interesting. I don't really want to though. Because I kind of want to control the camera. Let me just go back to this. So we can... Magnifying glass list. Let us examine the crumpled scores that have fallen off the piano. Look for clues. Can I touch it? Can I touch it? Is that a thing? There seems to be like a... What is that? There's like a, there's marks on the page. Let me just take this. What is this? Uh... I don't recognize the song. I don't recognize the song. Oh, what's this? Uh, nothing apparently. So what am I supposed to be looking for? Inspect? These sooty prints were left by a tiny hand. I don't understand why these music scores are covered with soot. Uh, okay, press R or the middle mouse button to switch to first person mode. Why? Use WASD or keep left mouse button pressed to move your character. Shift to run, R to return to point and click mode. To move the character, you just left click to the destination you want to reach. To right, to run to the desired direction. That's not what I. Switch back to third person. Shift to go faster. Okay, this is the. Alright, well, this is how you change the views. I wasn't really finished with this, but I guess I can't mess with that anymore. By pressing space, you activate Sherlock Holmes' sixth sense. It will show you a hint not discovered yet. Do I need to do that, or can I, like, never use that? I don't want to use that. You can now search for other clues in the room. Seriously, do we have to do that? Oh, I see. Well, that just highlights. Okay, I see. It highlights all the, uh, potential clues. All the windows are locked. They've not been forced. Alright, so I guess we just walk around looking for magnifying glasses. A candle. It must have fallen from the chandelier. Yeah, but how does it help? Uh fish Not tank. Not very well kept this aquarium. I can see a dead fish floating on the surface. Well maybe the Samoan necklace is inside. So there's like a tiny handprint, probably a monkey, right? And uh, they didn't get out of the window, although they probably came in the window. Got the necklace. Would the necklace be inside the fish tank? Can I like stick my hand in there and search around it for a bit? Uh, what is this? This draft screen makes an ideal hiding place. As the theft was committed at night, I conclude that the thief hid himself behind the draft screen and waited until he was alone in the room. That's called speculation, Sherlock Holmes. That's just guessing. Strange. There aren't any prints. Yet I'm sure that the thief hid here. <laughs> Get you sure? How can you be sure? Are you the same? Like, how do you... Alright, well, jumping to conclusions, the game. These documents are not very interesting, even though they're addressed to the Minister of Maritime Affairs. The Marquis himself! Okay. Addressed to the Marquis. When the servants arrived at the door, having been alerted by the bell, they saw evidence of the theft and the fire, but they didn't see the thief. This door is very hard to force. The Marquis is the only person to have the key. The thief could not get out through here until eventually, when the door was opened by the servants. Or they went up the chimney. That's possible. All right. Strange. There are some objects here that have been knocked over. You're right. The fire started here, just beneath the bell pull. 
Whoever pulled the cord would have had his feet in the fire unless it was pulled before the fire started. Heading towards his chosen escape route, probably the window, the thief knocked over the stool, which then caught fire. But why didn't he try to put the fire out at once? I'm not ah, done. Mr. Holmes, you're already here. Good morning, Inspector. You've arrived just in time. <laughs> Scotland Yard arrives like the cavalry, always in the nick of time. Ah, but I know that satisfied expression, Mr. Holmes. Have you already solved the case? It's no. possible. No, I haven't. We have retraced the thief's rather unusual footsteps. He is a true acrobat. But what I cannot understand is that when the servants entered the room, there was no one to be seen. An acrobat, perhaps, but an invisible one? <laughs> I do not think so. The only explanation is that the thief escaped before the servants arrived. I don't know how, but there is no other way. Half a point for the doctor, nil for the inspector. I am pleased to see that you find the situation amusing, Mr. Holmes. Very well, then. Explain. Dr. Watson was correct when he mentioned acrobatics, but he is mistaken about the nature of the acrobat. As for you, Baines, you're quite incorrect, as the thief was in the room when the servants entered. Explain, for heaven's sake, Mr. Holmes. Watson, how could a thief be missed in the middle of eight men? I don't know. Because he is very small? Stop teasing us, Holmes. Exactly. Because he is small. Small and remarkably agile. You're thinking of a monkey? And a trained monkey at that. Without a doubt, a Leontopicathus rosalia from Central America. The animal had been hidden inside the room for several hours, calmly awaiting the signal from his master. Once night had fallen and the room was empty, a high-frequency whistle alerted the monkey that it was time to begin the procedure for which he had been trained. The monkey emerged from his hiding place and used the point of a diamond to open the glass cabinet and steal the necklace. He headed across to the window by the chimney, but knocked over the stool, which in turn knocked aside the fire guard and started the fire. The frightened monkey jumped from the chimney by swinging from the bell pull, thus alerting the house servants. He then went to the window and began to use his diamond to cut a hole, but was interrupted by the staff trying to gain entry via the door, and he panicked again. He ran across the piano, scattering the music scores onto the floor, before hiding inside the chandelier, knocking over a candle. Finally. The servants and the Marquis entered the room, leaving the door open while they put out the fire. It was during the confusion that our agile little thief made his escape through the doorway. As simple as that. A brilliant explanation. Bravo, Holmes. And the necklace? I can see it from here, my friends. It's right in front of us. We have searched the room from top to bottom, Holmes. How were we unable to find it? because we paid insufficient attention to the only victim of this affair. What victim? No one is dead? Yes, Watson. A poor goldfish, whose destiny was to die, crushed by one of the most precious necklaces in England. The aquarium is just beneath the chandelier. I understand. The little monkey had likely hung the necklace around its neck and lost it when he leapt from the chandelier. The jewels fell into the aquarium, where they remain now. Marquis, so... here is your necklace. Intact. Just a little wet. Mr. Holmes! This brilliant demonstration does credit to your reputation. What? Thank you so much, Marquis. Do you wish to verify the authenticity of your jewel? No, I recognize it. I have spent many hours admiring it, you know. Good. I will return it to its box and... Inspector! A bank has just been held up. You must follow me at once. Orders of Scotland Yard. What times? Sirs, duty calls. My regards, Marquis. And well done again, Mr. Holmes. 
There, the necklace is in its box. We've lost enough time here. Let's go home, Watson. Ah, very well, as you wish. A good day to you, Marquis. With pleasure, gentlemen. And once again, thank you. Can we arrest that guy for his moustache and his top hat? What is that? Also, we didn't solve anything. We just looked at things and then Sherlock Holmes did all the explaining. Is this how the game is going to be? We just kind of look at things and then things solve themselves?